do you wish that you could play your N64 games and have accurate graphics while still being able to upscale? Well, now you can, thanks to the newest update Parallel has received in RetroArch. I've already made two N64 tutorials this year, and this is number three, just because this new update to the Parallel RDP is so awesome, it warrants being covered once again. The first thing you're going to need is RetroArch. If you don't already have it, head over to RetroArch.com, click on the Download tab, scroll down to near the bottom here, and click on Nightly Builds. From here, we're going to click on Windows. This is a tutorial for Windows. This core, this render, are only available on Windows as of the time of this video. So x86-64, then scroll all the way down to the bottom and download RetroArch.7-zip. Now, if for whatever reason you download this, run it, it doesn't work, Go ahead and download this redistributable.7-zip, extract that, run that, and you should be good to go. After you have RetroArch downloaded, go ahead and get it extracted, and make sure you extract it to the place you want to keep it. The first time you run RetroArch, it does default all of its directories into itself, so if you move it later, it won't be able to find BIOS files, save files, things like that. So if you move it, it will break it. Just as a quick example here, we're going to load up RetroArch. As you can see, it defaults all of its directories into the desktop. I move it, things stop working. The way to fix it is to delete the retroarch.config file. Then when you start it back up, it will redefault all of its directories back into itself once again. So for demonstration purposes, I leave my folder on the desktop. Make sure you put it where you want it. Go ahead and open up Retroarch. Press F on your keyboard to enter full screen mode if so desired. From here, we're going to go to the online updater, core downloader. And we're going to press right on our keyboard to get down to the Nintendo section here. And we are looking for Nintendo N64 Parallel. After that's downloaded, you can go ahead and back out to the main RetroArch menu. But just as a quick little demo here for people who have already downloaded RetroArch, got it set up, or followed one of my previous N64 tutorials and have Parallel, you can go into the online updater and update the already installed cores. And it will update any of your cores that have been updated since you first originally downloaded them. Good way to not have to start over from scratch. From here, you're free to start loading up your N64 games. So when we first load into Parallel, it's just using default settings. And as you can see, at an internal resolution of 640 by 480 it breaks graphics. Like you can see the line going through Bond's face on two of the pictures up here. And then when we get into the menu itself, you can see that there's all of the upscaling problems introduced here. You can just see that things don't always look right. And then getting into gameplay, you can see that around the borders of the screen that there's just some garbage data. And then you can see the seams in the textures on the mountain over there. You can just see that things don't work right when you upscale in 64 games using high-level emulation. And this is basically what we've been dealing with since 1998. <laughs> if we up the resolution higher, it does help to mask some of these issues, but they're still present. You can still see the seams in the mountain in the distance, and the distance fog is gone. It just, like, it looks okay. This is what we're used to with N64 emulation, but it could always be better. Especially around seams and geometry like this, like, this has just always been a problem with N64 emulation. And really up until now, the only way to counteract graphics bugs in N64 games was to use Angry Lion or the new update to Parallel that came out a couple months back. But, when you changed over to these plugins, by going into your quick menu options, you could change the graphics plugin to Parallel, RSP plugin to Parallel. This gives you a very accurate N64 picture but you aren't able to upscale it. It is limited to 640 by 480 max. As you can see, no graphic bugs, but you are limited to just low res N64-esque graphics. And this is honestly fine by me. I love accurate N64 emulation, so I've really enjoyed this. But the whole point of emulation is to overcome the downfalls of the original hardware allow you to play these older games in glorious higher resolutions. And now, thanks to the latest update to the Parallel RDP, we can finally do that. With another quick trip to our quick menu here, we can go down to the options, and we can turn up Parallel Upscaling Factors. Now, on my machine, I can only go up to 4x scaling. 
If I go up to the 8x scaling, it begins to lag. I'm using the R7-3900X with a GTX 1080 graphics card, and hitting 8x causes everything I play to lag. So I've only been able to cap out at 4x, and that has worked on every N64 game. So give it a shot, see what happens if you try it on 8x, but honestly, I really don't think 8x is meant for most anybody unless you have like the highest GPUs and CPUs. Right off the bat, you can see that there are no longer any tears in Bond's picture on the main menu. You don't see that obnoxious seam that was right there before. Now, that isn't to say everything is perfect. Upscaling, it does still reveal a couple of geometry issues, like on this, uh, this wall here, but overall, it is just way, 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 way better than what we have seen to date. The other great thing that has been added to this newest edition of the Parallel RDP is a better deintelacer for 480i games like Episode 1 Racer, Rogue Squadron, and honestly, all the 480i games. It combines elements of like Bob D interlacing and things like that to just get rid of interlaced graphics. Like you've played these games on an emulator, you know what I mean? Like there's just lines of pixels missing because it alternates the field of pixels, and that's how interlaced video works. So this new update kind of gets rid of that. You will see a little bit of this screen shake due to it. It's not as bad as typical Bob D interlacing like you would see on an OSSC, but it is still there. And it just makes the game so much better to look at in motion. And retaining the distance fog is just absolutely fantastic to me. Star Fox 64 is a game I absolutely love to see with the new parallel upscaling because it just never looks right to me in high level emulation upscaling and even like on the Wii Virtual Console, this game just didn't look right without distance fog. It really revealed a lot of pop-in issues, whereas having that fog just really is part of the atmosphere of this game and now that we could properly upscale it, we get that atmosphere with all of the benefits. So there's no downside here in my mind. I mean, of course that's personal preference on my part, but I mean, it's hard not to like this. It just looks so good. Another cool thing with this new update that we can do is even with this upscaling, we can actually downsample it again. So we're at 4X resolution, but we can we could downscale this by a factor of half, a quarter, or all the way down to a one-eighth. And this is cool because it adds back in some of that low-res pixelation that you would expect from an N64 game while still being much higher quality than with the upscaling turned off completely. So this is one-eighth on Star Fox 64. You can see that it's more reminiscent of what you would expect to see on a real console, but still looking far better than anything a real console could do. Then if you go to one fourth, it sharpens it up, half, and then of course disabled. Now there are some other cool things that have been added in with this new update as well. When we upscaled, you can see that everything looks really good. This actually isn't native N64 rendering happening. By default, N64 uses mip mapping to change the level of detail on objects, so the further they are away from your screen, the less detail they have. And when you upscale, you can really notice this. And so what you're actually witnessing with this new upscaler is the highest level of detail assets being used even on distant objects. If you go into your quick menu, go to options, you can turn on the native level of detail mip mapping that the N64 uses. And it's really cool to see. You really see how close to the camera N64 detail distances were. It's pretty nuts. Check this out in GoldenEye. Yeah, there you go. Look at those ground textures. That far away from the camera, the level of detail changes. But like, just across that bridge even, there's like no texturing to that ground. It's like flat. <laughs> and so it's cool that you have these options to change this now. You can just blast away with full level of detail. Or if you want to have that native experience, just see everything kind of muddy, blurry. Like, options are great. And then, of course, you can also disable things like dither, bilinear filtering, anti-aliasing, the gamma dither, divot filters, things like that, to just really let raw pixels shine through. Like, look at the clouds. That's all dithered up now. Let's go. It does result in a little bit sharper image, but, I mean, it's going to be personal preference if you like that or not. For me, as always, I do like to have things as close to the authentic experience as I can get, but honestly, having just... Unlimited level of details, nice. 
Now again, this is still pretty much at the same accuracy level as Angry Lion Current is, so all the downfalls you would expect from Angry Lion or the older parallel RDP that was in my last tutorial video are still present, so things like Pokemon Snap still have massive graphical glitches, the graphics in Rogue Squadron still uh, flicker in and out in certain areas, things like that, so there's still some work that needs to be done on it, but I am so extremely happy with what we're looking at right now, it's incredible. This is just simply the best N64 emulation has ever been to date, and I cannot wait to see where we are in another three months, and even a year from now. It's going to be absolutely incredible. But let's just go over some of the core options again real quick, just to have it all nice and detailed in one spot. So, first of all, if you press the F1 key on your keyboard or go press the guide button on your controller, you go into the quick menu. You go down to options. The first thing we're going to change is our player packs. If you want to have a memory pack or a rumble pack, you can change those here. And you can do that for all four players. Then you can enable and disable the expansion pack if wanted. Next up are the parallel specific options. These are really the only ones you're going to use if you are using the parallel RDP, which you really should be at this point. There's nothing better than it at this point. But you can crop pixel borders. So N64 games would render with black borders around the screen. Now on Pokemon Snap, they're not, there aren't really that many, so you can actually crop away these black borders completely. On other games like Daikatana in high-res mode or Hybrid Heaven, there are some pretty extreme black borders, and you can basically crop those away. Now do note, it just stretches along the vertical axis, so it will stretch them to get rid of it, so you really won't see much of a benefit to it in full screen mode, but if you play in window mode, you can resize the window and it looks really good. And of course we have the VI filterings, so you can just go ahead and turn these on and off as you'd please. Kind of went over those a little bit just a minute ago, but yeah, you can basically remove bilinear, anti-aliasing, things like that to help sharpen up pixels and really just reveal everything that was going on in the image. So if you disable all that stuff, you could just basically see the raw picture. And then of course we have the new upscaling. You could be at native res, two times upscale, four times upscale, or eight times upscale. Again, my computer with an R7 3900X and a 1080 cannot go up to 8X. I'm limited to just 4X here. Then you have the downscaling factor. This again helps you get sort of a native looking picture while still having higher resolution assets. And I think it looks pretty awesome. And then there's the level of detail. You can have the highest level of detail when upscaled or you can turn on native level of details. Then just leave use native resolution for text rect on. And then again for the GFX plugin set that to parallel, RSP plugin set that to parallel. And once that's set, none of this stuff down here even matters. None of this really matters. You can still overclock the VI and frame rate if you want to get higher frame rates in games that would have constant drops like GoldenEye. It's pretty neat to see, but that's pretty much it. The last thing I want to show you real quick is how to make a playlist for your N64 games once again. So if you go back to the main menu of RetroArch, you can go to the Show Desktop menu by clicking here or pressing up 5 on your keyboard. After the quick menu is brought up, just go ahead and press OK, and then over in this left-hand area over here, right-click, New Playlist, type Nintendo, space dash space, Nintendo 64. And that gives us a nice Nintendo N64 playlist entry here, complete with consoles. So go ahead and select that, then right-click over here, and click Add Folder. Then just browse to where your N64 games are stored, and hit Select Folder. From here, select Core, Parallel, N64, Database, Nintendo 64, and then press OK. And then it will add every game that is currently in that folder. Now, if you'd like to further pretty up this playlist, you can go ahead and right-click on the original Nintendo 64 playlist entry, download all thumbnails, this playlist. Now, games do need to be named a specific way for them to show up in the auto-downloader. As you can see, it's finding some of my thumbnails, and other ones it is not. What I like to do in that case is head over to GameFAQs because they have wonderful user uploaded media. So if you go and find the game, you can click on media, go to images, and they have a nice selection of box arts available. So in the case of Ocarina of Time, I want this nice collector's edition box art. I'm gonna go ahead and save that to my desktop. And now from here, I'm gonna make sure I have Ocarina of Time selected, and then I'm just gonna drag it over into this box art area here. And now when I select the game, it has a box art. For this playlist to show up within RetroArch, all you need to do is close down RetroArch and then launch it right back up. 
Now over on the left is a wonderful Nintendo 64 playlist entry. You select that and you can just go ahead and scroll through your selection of games and box arts will show up over on the right for the ones that you have them downloaded for. And then to run it, all you need to do is select it, click on run. And that's pretty much it as far as N64 emulation is really concerned as of today. Again, I'm really looking forward to seeing what comes in the next couple months, but now we have proper N64 graphics that are being upscaled natively within the emulator core itself, and I just absolutely adore it. It just looks so good in motion to me. Looks way better to me personally than previous upscaling methods have. Again, that will be a matter of personal preference. Maybe you prefer not to have as many of the N64's uh, graphical effects displaying on screen as I do, but honestly, that's the whole point of choice. It just gives us all the option to enjoy games how we like to enjoy them, and I'm just really happy to see the work being done in the N64 scene to make this really happen, because N64 emulation for so long has just been, it's good enough. We don't need to work on it, it's good enough, despite all of the flaws that it has had. But... As always, thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope that you have enjoyed seeing the new Parallel RDP renderer in action, seeing how to get it set up for yourself, and honestly, I look forward to hearing what you guys think of it yourselves. As always, if you have any questions, I'll do my best to help you out if you ask them in the comments section below. So as always, thanks again for watching. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that sub button, that like-dislike button, just depending on how much you like today's video. And if you'd like to further help support the channel, you can always check out that Patreon link in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen or click that join button here on YouTube. Every single person that does click on that helps me bring more stuff like this directly to you. So huge thank you just for your consideration. And to all my champions who have already done so, I can never thank you enough. Like, you have really, really put a boost on this channel. And... Thank you for that. But yeah, that's really going to do it. So until next time, stay awesome, and we will see you all back next video.